What up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Demarius Jackson. So, a few days ago, I uploaded a video of myself playing, and I noticed something very, very disturbing. <laughs> Look at my fingers, specifically on my right hand, they are all over the place. So this really got me thinking about how I can solve this challenge that I have. And then, boom, it hits me. A video of Baptiste Herbin, hopefully I'm saying his name correctly, forgive me if I'm not, popped into my mind that I viewed so, so long ago. It's basically a video of him and a couple of other saxophonists playing impressions. Take a look at it right here. So wait, did you see that? Let's pause the video. Take a, take a look really, really close. Look at that. Look at it. My man is straight up playing with a cigarette in his hand and still shredding. So it really got me thinking, not about taking up cigarette smoking, but how in the heck can he play that cleanly and that precise and that lack of better words, fast with a cigarette in his hand. And I came up with the solution. So by the end of this video, you'll have a few tools that you can use to improve your hand position that will have you shredding just like Baptiste Herbin in the video. Or maybe just a hair bit closer to shredding. But before we get to that, you know what I'm gonna ask. Make sure you scroll down, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, all of those good things. Even if you don't, I appreciate you being here and the video will probably keep on going. So without further ado, let's get to it. So three things come to mind specifically when it comes to improving uh, my hand position and my saxophone technique. The first thing is since I'm trying to be as, uh, as clean on my technique as this guy, Instead of using a cigarette because I don't smoke, I'm going to use a pencil and place it strategically in between my fingers and try to make sure that, that keeps me uh, conscious of my finger placement over the keys. And so with this exercise, I'm going to use my normal day-to-day uh, technique exercises, so all that I mean by that is scales, scales and thirds, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, just with the pencil in, once again, to try to make sure I'm aware of where my uh, finger placement is. Let's look at an example of that. So here we go with it in between my first and second finger. G major scale, I'll just go up chromatic scales until I stop. <laughs> And so one thing I like about this exercise, if you can see me, is I never think about my finger placement in this aspect. I always think of it in distance aspect from the keys. So this really gets me thinking about, you know, keeping my fingers uh, close in this aspect, not that aspect. Let's go ahead and try between the second and third finger. <laughs> between the third and fourth. I feel like this might be weird for me. I already know it is. Yeah, maybe between the third and fourth is not as effective because obviously we have these spatula keys. Let's go ahead and move on to our right hand. So here we go with the right hand, which is my main problem. That's harder than I thought it would be. All right, so let's go ahead and try our second and third finger, right hand. And last 
lastly, third and fourth, this might not be pretty. <laughs> wrong with me play it faster that's the answer folks it's 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 not so the second thing i would do is i already actually made a video of this it's called extreme saxophone technique exercises so the too long didn't watch version of this is basically you put some uh, paper or whatever kind of material something lightweight underneath your fingers and then you place that paper in between your fingers and the keys on the saxophone. I'll leave a link to that video somewhere up here down in the bio. But here's a quick clip of me playing some of those exercises right now. I'm actually using these post-it notes that I found. I'm not cheating, they are stuck to each other so there's no sticky side, even though I probably probably would do that. But here we go, put it on my first finger, right hand. <laughs> So I'm not going to lie, that exercise is extremely hard for me. So what I like to do is isolate the problem. And basically, I'm not even going to try to play the entire scale right now. I'm just going to concentrate on going from F to G. <laughs> It's still there. And third is something that actually a prior flute teacher taught me, and it's about basically the natural upthrust of your fingers. So what I mean by that is basically what it is is if I have my hand in a relaxed position and I actually go to push my fingers uh, down in a relaxed position, they naturally want to return to the position that they were just at. Like, I don't consciously actually think of moving my fingers back up into place. Once again, in a relaxed state, they just naturally do that. And so think about this for a second. You need to let the springs on the saxophone actually do the work for you. So what I mean by that is these springs, if you're in a super relaxed position, they will actually push your hands up. And so that's something easier to think about than actually do if you know what I mean. Essentially, it's kind of hard to feel the tension of the springs underneath your fingers, especially when you're, you know, just, I guess, free playing and not actually actively thinking about it. So there's two exercises that I do to get my mind wrapped around that idea of spring tension and actually feeling the tension of the springs underneath my fingers. The first exercise is actually a slide. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm moving my keys very, very slowly, not losing contact between the pads or whatever part of your fingers that you use and the pearls or synthetic material on the keys. I'm moving very, very slowly, one finger at a time and feeling that spring tension and having like a slide or a glissando in my sound if I were actually playing. It kind of looks like this. <laughs> that second exercise I'm doing the exact opposite of the first I'm popping the keys up as quickly as I can but once again trying to maintain contact between the pads of my fingers and the actual pearls or synthetic material whatever it may be on the keys once again I'm trying to maintain contact that is the key and I will do this on whatever skill exercises I'm currently practicing here is a quick example <laughs> So the important thing to remember is, at the end of the day, this process will not happen overnight. I basically need to practice more hours doing the exercise than not doing the exercise. And that's gonna honestly be a challenge, especially if you didn't do this early in your playing. So the moral of the story is, don't get into this mess. Do it early in your playing. But if you're like me, it's not too late. Go ahead and practice those exercises every single day. Try to get into a rhythmic pattern of it, and hopefully it will show off in your playing. 
And there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Subscribe, comment, and leave a like on the video. Make sure you tune in a year from now so you can uh, clown me if my fingers are still flying off the keys like they were in that earlier video. Thanks for watching. Join me on Instagram. The handle is at Demarius Jackson Music. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Out.